FA1 Part B Recording and Accounting for Cash Transactions Chapter 6 Banking Monies Received The topics that this presentation will cover are 1. The Banking System 2. The Banker, Customer Relationship 3. Procedures for Banking Cash 4. Procedures for Banking Checks 5. Procedures for Banking Plastic Card Transactions 6. Banking and EFTPOS 7. Banking Other Receipts 1. A banking system normally consists of the following parts. The main bank, clearing or retail banks, and smaller retail banks. The clearing system. Clearing, is the mechanism banks use for obtaining payments for checks. The steps of the clearing system are on page 131 of your interactive text study guide. And a diagram that illustrates the clearing system is on page 132 of your interactive text study guide. These are the following services that a bank may offer. Retail banks may offer Credit cards Investment and share dealing Loans Home, travel, and pet insurance Foreign currencies, and wealth management Investment banks will offer services that will enable businesses and wealthy people to raise capital through issuing shares. Other services that investment banks offer include foreign currencies, commodities, and derivatives. There are many ways to access banking services, not just going to the bank's branch in person. Now you can use your cell phone, a telephone, and even the internet to contact the bank, and also to manage your account. Two. A banker is someone who will put money and checks received, on a customer's behalf, into his account. Take out all checks and orders paid, from the customer's account, by the customer. Keeps accounts, which are used for paying in or taking out of, on a customer's behalf. A person becomes a customer of a bank when the bank opens up an account for the person. The bank accepts instructions from the person and undertakes to provide him a service. If a bank owes legal duties to a customer, the bank can be sued if these legal duties are not carried out. There are four main types of contractual relationships that can arise between a customer and the bank. 1. Receivable, Payable When a customer deposits cash at the bank, the bank becomes the receivable and the customer is the payable. When the bank gives a customer money on overdraft, the bank becomes the payable and the customer is the receivable. 2. Bailer, Bailey When a customer stores property in the bank's safest deposit facilities, the bank becomes the bailey and the customer is the bailer, this type of agreement is called a bailment. Bailment is a legal relationship in common law where physical possession of personal property is transferred from one person, the bailer, to another person the bailey. 3. Principal, Agent When a bank arranges insurance for a customer from a third party, the bank becomes the agent, and the customer is the principal. 4. Mortgager, Mortgagee When a bank lends money to a customer, with a mortgage on the customer's property as security for the loan, the bank becomes the mortgagee and the customer is the mortgager. A fiduciary relationship is not a contractual relationship. It occurs when the bank is in a position to exert undue influence on a customer. For example, forcing a customer to do something they don't want to do. In this case, the law expects the bank to act in good faith. These are the rights of a banker. They may use the customer's money. For example, to earn interest. They may demand repayment of overdrawn balances. They may possess a lien over securities. A lien is a right to retain the possession of another's property till a debt is paid. They may make charges or commission, as well as charging interest on overdrafts. These are the duties of a customer. They ensure that they are not facilitating fraud. They indemnify the bank when it acts on the customer's behalf. These are the duties of the banker, which are also the rights of the customers. The bank must honor a customer's check, as long as it is correctly made out, 
there is funds in the customer's account and there is no legal reason why the check cannot be paid. The bank must take receipt of the customer's funds. The bank must be able to make repayment on demand. The bank must comply with the customer's instructions, as long as the customer has sufficient funds to fulfill the request. The bank must be able to provide a statement for the customer, which shows all transactions on a customer's account, and the balance of the account. A bank should keep all information about the customer confidential. There are, however, four known exceptions to this rule. If disclosure is required by law. If it is the public duty of the bank to disclose, for example, if the customer trades with an enemy during a war. If it is in the interest of the bank to disclose, for example, when the bank sues the customer to recover what the customer owes. And if the customer has given expressed or implied consent. The bank must advise the customer when it encounters forgery of the customer's signature, and it is on a document that is being used to draw money from the customer's account. A bank must use care and skill when handling the customer's account. A bank must give reasonable notice when it wishes to close a customer's account. 3. When banking cash, the cash should be properly counted and sorted, the notes and coins should be listed by denomination on the paying-in slip, deposit slip. When coins are banked, they need to be put in plastic pay-in bags, with the correct number of coins as shown on the bag. This is the procedure for preparing a paying-in slip, deposit slip. Step 1. Count the cash. Step 2. Add up, on a separate slip of paper, the amount being banked. Step 3. Compare the calculated total with the total in the cash register. Step 4. Calculate any differences between the cash counted and the cash register total. Step 5. Enter in the totals of each denomination of note in the appropriate place. Step 6. Add up the numbers again to check the total and enter it in total cash. 4. When banking checks, the following details are required for the paying in slip. The name of the drawer. The amount of the check. The total value of the checks banked. The number of checks being banked. The paying in slip is the same as the slip for cash but the back of the slip needs to be filled in for checks. Stop the lecture. Answer the question on page 140 and 141 of your interactive text study guide. A check may be returned or dishonored, because either there was insufficient funds in the account, or the check was reported stolen. The check could also be returned because it was filled in wrong, or the check is out of date, either too old, or the date on the check is too far in the future. 5. The manual processing of plastic card transactions is rare, but it is described, so that card transactions can be followed through the banking system. The manual plastic card transactions need to be listed on a summary voucher for banking purposes. The processing copies are sent to the bank and the retailer keeps two copies of each voucher, including the summary voucher. The manual plastic card transactions are processed through the banking system. The same paying in slip as cash is used, but other documents must be prepared first. All card transactions need to be summarized on a summary voucher. The summary voucher consists of a top copy which is the original copy and the bottom two copies which are for processing. The summary voucher is imprinted with the retailer's card. Only the amounts of card transactions need to be entered on the back of the processing copy of the summary voucher. For the steps that need to be followed when banking card vouchers. See pages 143 to 146 of your interactive text study guide. These are the most common types of problems that arise with card receipts. Stolen card. The action taken. If the retailer has followed proper security procedures, the card issuer will honor transaction. The transaction is above the floor limit. The action taken. The card issue may refuse to honor the transaction if the retailer has been negligent in obtaining authorization. Errors in completing the card voucher or in processing it. The action taken. Discrepancies which arise as a result of the error, can be dealt with quickly and efficiently, by correspondence directly between the business and the card issuer. Stop the lecture.
Answer the question on page 147 of your interactive text study guide. 6. All credit, charge, and debit card receipts that are processed on EFTPOS will be directly credited to the retailer's bank account. The retailer can agree the amounts received, to the end-of-day transactions that are printed from the terminal, to his bank account. If there are any queries about any transactions that have occurred, the retailer needs to be able to refer to the relevant documentation, so it is important to keep all receipts safe for six months or longer. 7. Some receipts require no action from a business for them to be paid into the business's account. These are Direct debits Standing orders Automatic payments, and telegraphic transfers. These receipts, which need to be paid into the business's bank account, and which are rare for a business account are Banker's drafts, which is paid into the bank by the business in the same way as a check. Bank gyro credits, can be paid into a bank account by a customer, and it will automatically appear onto the business's bank account. This is the end of Chapter 6. What will follow next is the quick quiz. After the quick quiz, do the online questions for Part B, Chapter 6. It will be good practice because the online questions are set out like the exam that you do at the end of the course. They will also test your knowledge of this chapter. Quick Quiz Question 1. What is clearing in banking terms? Question 2. How long does a check take to clear? Question 3. What are the four types of relationships which may exist between a banker and customer? Question 4. What is a fiduciary relationship? Question 5. How should coins be banked? Question 6. Which details from checks should be included on the paying in slip? Question 7. If you accept a stolen check in good faith, is it worth anything to you? Question 8. What happens if you accept a stolen credit card for an amount below your floor limit? After doing the quick quiz, do the online questions for Part B, Chapter 6. Do the questions, until you achieve 80%. Replay the lecture as needed.